When winter has taken spring's final flower When its life becomes ugly and cold When death comes upon me like an eviction this unassuming White House on Pete Sane Road is now the setting for a shocking murder investigation. Investigators say 37-year-old Gregory Scott Hale confessed to murdering a woman here on Friday. This court affidavit describes what allegedly happened next. Detectives say he cut off the woman's head, hands, and feet and placed them in buckets, then buried her torso in a burn pile and confessed to eating part of her body. Gregory Hale idolized serial killer Richard Ramirez. Hale was a self-proclaimed Satanist who was fired at a slaughterhouse after his boss found him carrying out a ritual with animal parts. Unfortunately for Lisa Hyder, she would have an accident encounter with Hale and he would kill her and then mutilate her body before consuming her flesh. Before we begin, viewer discretion is definitely advised. Hello, my name is Ollie. Welcome to the Murder She Shed, the place we honor the dead right from my she shed. We discuss rarely told true crime right here, usually two times weekly. So hit that subscribe if you are tired of hearing the same true crime stories over and over. We don't like to do repeat cases. We like to get our own cases around here, or at least attempt to that you've never heard. I try to get all victims a chance at their story being told. So come join us weekly, please. We'd love to have you. 37-year-old Gregory Scott Hale adored serial killer Richard Ramirez, obsessively reading his manifesto and posted on Facebook when the killer died in 2014. Rest in peace, Night Stalker. Wish I could have met you. A warped love of Satanism, weapons, venomous snakes, and cannibalism was evident in his blogs and pictures on Facebook. Disturbing comments from him included, I hug the people I hate, so I know how big to dig their hole in my backyard. If someone were to become a cannibal and eat a vegetarian, would the vegetarian taste like that fake soy meat he posted? Hell had a girlfriend and a teenage son named after a Norse god. Hell certainly didn't fit into his community in a little town in Tennessee. The community felt uneasy around him and would not be shocked about what Hell would eventually be accused of. He seemed like he wanted to shock people by just the post he would put on social media. As you can see, he's a little different. The way he dresses on his Facebook post, wearing a mask and carrying swords and just a bit creepy, just a bit creepy. After being fired from a meat processing plant for taking some blood, bones, and eyes of slaughtered animals home, Hill was forced to move back with his parents, who were about to retire. The community knew Hill's parents as really good people. After moving in with his parents, Hill began to stage rehearsals where he would stalk women and imagine how it would be to RAP, capture, and kill them. He had a domestic violence charge from November of 2001 and charges of simple possession, driving on a revoked or suspended license, possession of drug paraphernalia, and several arrests for violations of probation and failure to appear in court. So he had some background on him, but nothing as severe as what would happen next. No one would even imagine. From the slaughterhouse, he had learned how to perfectly cut up meat. After he was fired, he started drinking more. I guess it depressed him moving back in with his parents. He began to drink more, isolate himself, get on social media a lot, and post these randomly weird things. His sick fantasies would lead to murder on June 8, 2014 in Manchester, Tennessee. 36-year-old Lisa Marie Hyde had six children and two ex-husbands. She had struggled with alcoholism for a while before she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and was given only six months to live. She started to drink more because she was just ready to die. She had refused any treatment for cancer. She had been married six years to her ex-husband Charles, who was a truck driver. But they had divorced about a year earlier. Lisa was described as a sweet and pretty woman. She just had some struggles in her life that she was trying to overcome. But 
her family felt that she would overcome them until she was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and then she pretty much just gave up. She had struggled with alcoholism her whole life, which had caused failures of both of her marriages. Part of Lisa's struggle with alcohol came from the fact she actually worked at a liquor store. Well, it didn't help anyway. Her ex-husband Charles often would rescue her when she needed help. On June 8, 2014, Lisa had called up her ex-husband Charles and asked if he could come to Coffee County to collect her from the liquor store. Charles informed Lisa that he was in Huntsville, Alabama, unloading his truck, but said that when he got home at around 4.30, he would then come and collect her there. However, when Charles called Lisa up, her phone was dead, and it went straight to voicemail. Hale was driving through Manchester in June 2014 when he stopped off at a liquor store to get some beer. When leaving the store, he noticed an attractive woman waiting at the corner. That woman was Lisa, who had just gotten off work. Hale offered to bring her home. She hesitated at first, but was getting tired waiting for her ex-husband. As they drove, Hunter noticed that Hale was not following the directions she had gave him. Hale told her that he needed to make a stop at his home. When they arrived at his home, he invited her inside. She was hesitant until he mentioned they could have a few drinks before taking off again to bring her home. Hyder agreed. She did not have the strength to put up with all the stress she was experiencing in her life and just wanted a drink. He took advantage of her weakness. Hale got the fireplace going outside and sat down next to her. He poured her a drink and they started to talk about each other's lives. The effects of sharing each other's stories, the fire and the alcohol came together to make her feel comfortable with Hale. Hale could detect this and moved in closer to her where he planted her with a long kiss and then he suggested they go to bed. According to Hale, they had SEX. After having SEX, they lay in bed. When Hyder fell asleep, Hale got out of bed went to his closet and grabbed his machete. Standing over her sleeping body, Hale swung the machete with a hard downward motion that caused the sharp blade to drive through her torso. She let out a scream of pain when he swung at her again and again. Looking at the horrific results of his actions, Hale felt a great sense of pleasure. He had accomplished the kind of deed that his hero, Ramirez, was known for. The bed sheets were soaked in blood as it flowed from her deep gashes. His bedroom walls and carpet were splattered in her red blood. Hale then cut up her body in his parents' pretty suburban home. He placed her head and hands in one bucket and her feet in another one. Smiling with pride, he picked flesh from the body parts and began to eat them. even used his phone to take a picture of the buckets filled with the flesh. He placed her heart in his neighbor's garden. He decided to bury the rest of her body in his parents' backyard, which had a burn pit, which is what they'd been sitting around during the night when they were drinking. They'd been sitting around this fireplace pit, so he already had a fire started, so he decided to place her body in that. He thought it was the perfect place to bury her body. He did not have the experience of his idol, Ramirez, and perhaps he wasn't the brightest guy because what he did next was just, well, stupid. Hale went to one of his neighbors and asked if he could borrow his mechanical digger. The mistake he made was the comment he made to the neighbor. He told his neighbor he needed the digger to bury a body. His neighbor called police, of course. He arrived at Hale's home and arrested him. They found Hunter's body in the buckets at the burn pit. Hale had no choice but to confess to his crime. He was charged with first-degree murder and the abuse of a corpse. A psychiatrist familiar with the case stressed the significance of catching Hale. He stated that Hale was in the beginning stages of learning how to kill. If he had not been caught, he most likely would have gone on to be a serial killer. The district attorney would later say he definitely has a fascination with the occult, and I do believe he considers himself a Satan worshiper. There's all kinds of evidence of that gathered at his residence and on his computer. He said he fantasized about killing someone for a long time and saw this as an opportunity to fulfill that fantasy. He said he'd always fantasized about eating human flesh. Gregory Hale has been sentenced to life without parole. 
Hill has recently been trying to sell items from prison on the website TrueCrimeAuctionHouse.com. The site features personal items, artwork, and documents allegedly linked to or produced by notorious criminals, including Charles Manson and serial killers Tommy Lynn Sales and Henry Lee Lucas. One of Hill's signed doodles was listed on the site at $30. A signed drawing was $35. And goatee, yes, his goatee trimmings with the envelope was on there at $95. Which, if you look at them, they're super disgusting. I'm sorry, but they look like pubes. Ugh, it just made me gag looking at it. So, of course, I have to show you guys, right? Hell has denied those allegations, saying a pen bell asked him for those items and was not supposed to even sell them. I'm sure Lisa's family and children miss her dearly. This video is dedicated to Lisa's memory, and I mean no disrespect by telling her story today. I just don't know how I'm going to deal with it. I really don't. She loved everybody. She was friendly with everybody. That's what I'm saying. She never met a stranger. I mean, she did. She really did. She trusted people people with all her heart. My daughter should not have been butchered and mangled the way she was. Justice needs to be done here. I want the death penalty, nothing less. Oh, God, I want to get this guy so bad, but I know I can't do it. God's going to handle him. Parents need to watch, and these kids need to watch. Don't trust people. Don't go by yourself. And tonight, Lisa's two young children will call for their mother like they do every night before they sleep. Can we call mommy? Can we call mommy? I do, but it don't do no good. And we tell them that she's with Jesus in heaven. Rest in peace, Lisa. All right, guys, that's it for the murder she shed today. See you guys in a few days. I love y'all. Bye. He put rest in peace, not, 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 not stalker. The community knew his hell parents, his hell parents. <laughs> well, I'd say hell was a fitting last name for him. Being a Satanist and all, wouldn't y'all? My voice is, uh, I'm sorry, my voice is so cracky. Six years to her ex husband char. Oh my God, dang it. Then, after having essay at, this video is to get murder she shed where I fill your head with dread and you go to bed a little scared from the murder she shed. Don't ask me. That was just the added effect just for you guys because I like to entertain y'all at all times. My voice is coming back, thank God. I was starting to. I'm still gruffy and I'm still going in and out, so I apologize about that, but Eventually, maybe I'll get back to my normal squeaky self. <laughs> maybe it sounds better lower. Y'all don't, y'all's ears don't hurt as bad in the earphone. Y'all like, Yee! sorry. Here he is. Here's his mom. Can I turn you around? Here, let's turn you around. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay, now, look, there's that beautiful boy. He's a beautiful boy. He says, bye. We love you. <laughs> you got like, eat my face or something. <laughs> We love you. Oh, God. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what to do my face on that one. <laughs> hope you've been, been licking your wing. Say bye, I love you. We hope you have a great week. Bless me. We'll see you in a few days. Ooh. When winter has taken spring's final flower, when its life becomes ugly and cold, When death comes upon me like an eviction notice, leaving my soul.